Our next speaker is a man who needs no introduction because I did introduce him just a minute ago, uh, Manuel Madrana, who's going to talk about the SB 54 issue. Take the lead, Manuel, and introduce your people. Okay, okay. Lori, you could, yeah, you could be up here if you want. Or you want well, Lori Mendez is uh, yeah. one of our board members, local environmental lawyer, and uh, an activist. <laughs> so, so hello again. Um, uh, I'm really uh, also very proud to be up here uh, with Doug Cobalt, Executive Director of Co uh, California Product Stewardship Council. I served uh, with him as a board member, no longer as a board member, no longer a board member, but I uh, served with, with Doug. Great work that CPSC is doing. Hopefully, we'll get a little bit of time to, to explain the great work they do and the great uh, uh, legislation they're supporting uh, this year and have supported in the past. But today, we're talking about SB 54, and we have a, a somewhat of a pseudo panel that we have up here. Uh, Lori Mendez from the Mendez uh, uh, Law Group. Is that, did I get that right? Okay, there, there we go. She's going to give us a perspective on some of the some of the uh, effects, potential effects, in the, uh, uh, with the, the law to local jurisdictions. I'll be giving you some perspective on the, on this law too, uh, on what this means. So uh, to to uh, to cities like Chula Vista, San Diego, and the county, and, and others locally. So SB 54. For those of you guys who don't know, the Plastic Pollution Plastic Pollution Prevention and Packaging Producer Responsibility Act. That's a long name. Uh, which aims to reduce the volume of plastic and other packaging, increase recycling, shift packaging pollution responsibility to producers, very, very, very important, uh, provide clarity and consistency for, custom, for consumers, uh, stimulate investment and reuse and refill systems, again, really, really needed, um, and fund cleanup efforts in, to, in disadvantaged communities. And again, and, and something else that it might, you know, eventually it will be uh, providing some funding for cities um, perhaps in grants, and also to, to help spur, to, to create more of a, of, a, um, of a market for this material, hopefully in California, if not, definitely uh, domestically. So this, this, this piece of legislation, very, very important, uh, great that, we, that was actually, it was supported by, by um, we, it didn't have to go to, to the electors because it would have perhaps met with a lot of opposition, no, not perhaps, it would have met with a lot of opposition that would have defeated this effort. So the fact that it was signed by the governor um, and worked on uh, with, and, and in, co in collaboration with all the work that organizations like CPSC, like others uh, that, that came to the table and were able to work um, to make sure that this, this was uh, good and equitable for everybody, but mainly for cities like us, like re for consumers like us that are Really, a lot of us are confused as to what's recyclable, what's not recyclable, and why are we're still buying material and products, uh, the consumer products in a non-recyclable uh, item or, or, or compostable uh, product that, that make sure that, to make sure that we, we have products that are, uh, are gonna be uh, obviously recyclable and, and, um, and, and um, compostable. So the, again, groundbreaking, one of a kind in, in the world, I believe. And with a lot of uh, a lot of attention now from other cities, uh, other countries that are that want to follow California's directive. But so uh, with that, again, I'd like to uh, thank everybody, my, my two panel members. Doug Cobalt also happens to be uh, in the what's the actual name of that group uh, for SB 54? It's the, oh, the SB 54 advisory, advisory board. board. Yeah, that which was created uh, with members uh, of different sectors of the of the state, different sectors of the of the economy, basically, and and of this whole program. Um, so with that, I'd like to turn it over to you, to, to Doug. Go ahead. You want to go? Whichever one. Go. Okay. Yeah, go, Lori. Okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Okay. Yay. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're awake. This is the first time in like a decade I haven't spoken at the very end of the day when people are mostly sleeping. Thank you. You told me about that. Okay. And so thank you. I'm so pleased to be here and so honored. I am here um, wearing two hats on behalf of both the... Um, save the Albatross Coalition because uh, the Albatross is our canary in the coal mine uh, flying aloft uh, all over the world and sees exactly what we're doing and all of the waste goes there. I've spoken before about how it gets into the babies. And um, it's our canary in a coal mine because what happens to the Albatross will eventually happen to us and it already is. And second, um, here on behalf of Zero Waste San Diego, um, really pleased to be here on their behalf. And uh, our mission is we promote and manage zero waste programs and events 
like this one. We advocate for policy changes that promote zero waste society, a zero waste society. We educate people, we try, on how they can reduce the effects of climate change through sustainable resource management. So those are our goals and that is why I am here. Arrow down. So um, I'm an impatient person. Um, what I do takes um, years and litigation to get a result, but I'm very impatient. And when I see all of the things that are going on with our planet and animals and us and people in um, disadvantaged communities, um, fence line communities, I'm very frustrated and I want things to happen right now. I want change now. Um, having said that, I'm very grateful to Doug. I'm very grateful to his organization and so many others who've worked so hard on this bill. It is a step in the right direction. So um, let's proceed. Um, this is, has everybody heard of SB 54? Hmm. Okay, well, let's talk about it. I'll try and tell you what I know. Um, first of all, it started out with an organization up in San Francisco called Recology and uh, Natural Resource Defense Council. They got together and put a ballot measure together because nothing was happening in Sacramento. And so they did this um, so that they could get something done. Well, the um, legislators, especially um, Senator Allen, took notice. Um, he's the one with the red tie. And um, basically brought a lot of stakeholders together to get this act passed. So it was sort of a small miracle that it got done. Um, it was inspired by that Chinese sword we were talking about. So all of our waste was piling up and had nowhere to go. And we knew we had to do something. Everybody knew it. And 91% of all of us know that we have to do something and we want, we want something to be done. So voila, we have all those Ps. Plastic pollution prevention. It doesn't say plastic prevention. It says plastic pollution prevention. But plastic prevention is one part of it. And packaging producer responsibility. Well, that's a lot of words, a lot of Ps. So <laughs> uh, basically, Lori the lawyer will tell you what she knows about that. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, basically, the plastic um, pollution prevention part, well, it's through something called expand, expanded producer responsibility, more big words. Um, so EPR, and that is basically to incentivize producers by making them pay money, a uh, boatload of money, um, to do business in California and bring their plastics into California and sell them. So we're trying to help them, scooch them along to help them redesign um, their products so that they're more organic, compostable, and at a minimum recyclable. Um, this act hassle has to dovetail with um, priorities in California already that are codified that say that we have to start with reduction and you know we get to recycling a, a little bit further down the road. Um, also, um, it has to dovetail with that um, 1383 that we talked about and another law called um, SB 343, which is the Truth in Lending Law. All right, I could just stay on this one slide all, <laughs> all the time. You'll see when I started to run out of time and there's no color. So <laughs> anyway, but I don't know All right, if all of you want to find this law and find out about this law, you can go to two places. You can go to Cal Recycle, that's like the Department of, I don't know, Resources and Recycling and something else. And they call themselves Cal Recycle. I'll give you a, a link or um, a QR code at the end to find that, but here you go. This is where the code lives. So SB 54 has been made into a code called the California Public Resources Code. All right, so all these sections um, give you an idea of where things are, general provisions, a lot of definitions about what is plastic, surprisingly, it sounds like it's simple. What is recyclable, what is recyclable, Gold, or it can be recycled, what actually is recycled, composting, et cetera, and producers, and PROs, that's a big one in this, in the, in this rubric. So those are producer responsibility organizations. And so everybody who's a producer has to join one of those. They're supposed to join them by January 1st, and there's already one, I'll talk about that in a minute, 
Um, but there should be, <clears throat> all the producers have to belong to that, or they can even be on their own, but they have to follow the law on their own, and they um, will be held accountable by themselves. So it's a little more difficult. And so here are some requirements. And so the producers, these are of covered materials. That's another buzzword. Um, so these are producers who sell the covered materials, which are packaging. So it can be plastic and non-plastic packaging. And they're sold or distributed here in, the, here in California. And they are all responsible um, through, like I said, EPR, ex, um, Extended Producer Responsibility, for achieving the source reduction. That part's really good. Um, the albatross likes that and recyclability and compostability, and recycling rates. So they have to have better rates of recycling under this act. So that's the idea, is that we have less stuff going into the environment, less stuff going into the landfill, more being recycled. And if you really study this stuff, that's a whole other topic, but recycling can only take you so far. Like, you can't keep recycling forever. It's not the answer. But anyway, I'll take off my advocate hat for a second. Um, okay, so producers, well, we just talked about that. So this is kind of what that looks like, and you'll find this on Cal um, Recycle's website as well. So basically, we try to get, um, this act seeks to get 100% of single-use packaging, all this by 2032. So that's what I'm saying. It's like a 10-year process, okay? But it's happening. So anyway, 100% of single-use packaging and plastic single-use foodware will be recyclable or compostable. And then 65% of single-use plastic packaging and foodware will actually be recycled. OK, so anyway, a little nuance there. And then there are deadlines in earlier years, like by 2028, 20, 30%, by 2030, 40%. And the one I love is the 25% of single-use plastic packaging and foodware will be source reduced by weight and unit. As far as I know, that they will really be reduced. I don't think those are weasel words. That's what we call them in attorney lingo. Um, but anyway, 10% by 2027 and 20% by 2030. And with Doug sitting on the advisory board of only 16 people in the whole state, I trust that that's going to happen. All right, so then um, there are all kinds of technicalities, and I really don't want to get into this too much because we only have 10 minutes and I still have like 28 slides. <laughs> but anyway, um, let it suffice, you know, go look at Cal, just go look at the Cal um, Recycle page if you're really interested in this stuff and the nuances. And you can take a look at those codes, you can Google them and they'll come right up, you can get them for free. They're totally publicly accessible, tons of fun reading this stuff. Um, so, even, even for me, no, not even for me, really, but okay. So, um, this tells you what is recyclable, sort of. It's kind of confusing, but anyway, it, it has some criteria, and mainly my understanding is those arrows, which I think we're going to have some more clarity about starting this year and next year um, in the truth and uh, labeling law, under SB 343 that I mentioned before, like ones, twos, and fives. So I keep telling everybody the inside of the Starbucks cup is makes the whole cup not recyclable. All right, anyway. Um, so we talked about the rate requirements for both food service items and plastic covered um, materials. Under the food service items, specifically EPS, which is expanded polystyrene. Tons of, tons of uh, abbreviations here. So. Anyway, the polystyrene we think is going to be de facto or kicked out of California because we don't think it has a chance of meeting the, the recycling rate requirements. So we think, think, thankfully, we think that EPS, we predict, is going to go away from California. Anyway, um, so the thing about the PRO, the good thing about this law is that they have to implement and they have, they have to do all the, the heavy lifting. And they have to pay for that stuff. So all the stuff that Cal Recycle does, and Doug will correct me right afterwards if anything I said is inaccurate. But I understand that they will have to pay for all the implementation. And that is for Cal Recycling. That is for what they have to do. All the producers that are in like this umbrella group of a PRO have to, have to pay for this stuff. And um, 
Anyway, there's some things you can read about on the site about what is covered material, and there's a list of um, single-use packaging and then foodware, and it's kind of an evolving thing, and just regulations just came out, um, and Doug can talk more about those, but um, so just on December 28th, we got a bunch of stuff from Cal Recycle, so they're doing their job, and PROs are starting to um, take form, and basically what I want to talk to you about now is I want to switch gears and just let you know local jurisdictions, which are, anybody here from municipalities? Any municipalities? The county? Anyway, all right, very good. So I'm speaking to you. My understanding, actually, in speaking with Mr. Medrano from the city of Chula Vista, is that you all need to check your contracts with your waste haulers and recyclers. And um, you, my understanding, because I want to show you this one slide, really, um, about fee allocation. So um, they try to take care of disadvantaged communities and do cleanups. Again, I personally don't think that's the answer, but it, it will help. It'll help in the short term. And they help with the cost of implementation. But this is a big kicker, and environmental groups really love this. And so should um, jurisdictions and also waste haulers and anybody involved in the waste stream. So there are $5 billion, $5 billion over 10 years starting in 2027. January 1st, 2027, those funds will be available, and they you know, are for implementation, they're for cleanups, they're for different things is my understanding. Although this one may just be for cleanup, I'm not sure. But there are implementation, no matter where, Doug, Doug please let us know about that. <laughs> okay, because I'm not a pro on that subject. But anyway, there are funds to implement. So if you are um, a local jurisdiction, check into that, check your contracts, and see if you qualify for funds to implement and make you know this happen in your community, in your city. And then again, um, the rest of this will go for mitigating uh, disadvantaged communities that are disproportionately affected by uh, pollution, especially plastic pollution. Okay, so um, there are enforcement provisions and a maximum of 50,000 a day um, in an administrative civil penalty. And my understanding that can be for both um, the um, producers, producer uh, responsibility organization, and maybe also like local jurisdictions and waste haulers and such who don't cooperate with um, Cal Recycling. But I'm not positive how those apply to the latter. And so local jurisdictions, these are things that um, you might want to look into. Again, you want to see if there um, is existing or planned or potential investment related to collecting, processing, and transporting covered materials. So I check that out. I'd also check if there's a process for receiving reimbursements for investments from the PRO and the role of local governments and haulers and service providers in negotiating costs with the PRO. So you want to try and get as much as you can, okay? <laughs> speaking from an attorney voice. Uh, and the effect of um, SB 54 on reimbursements to your rate payers. So there are also some duties for uh, local jurisdictions and um, haulers and uh, MRFs, et cetera. I know there's already a lot of reporting going on, but um, when Cal uh, Recycle asked for it, um, this is not exactly the slide, but they do material characterization studies and they need your help. So it's a collaborative process and they will be asking for information and basically you have to give it to them. Um, yes, yeah, so all local jurisdictions have to include in their collection and recycling programs all, remember I said the buzzword, covered materials. So those are contained on a published list, and you can find that list on CalRecycle. And I talked about you have to submit information if they ask for it. And um, if you can't recycle, these are a little bit out of order, but if you can't recycle um, those, um, if you can't recycle the covered material, then you can ask for an exemption, and you can ask for a re-exemption. The exemption is good for two years, and you can ask to be re-exempted after that for another two years, and so on, if there's a good reason why you're not able to recycle, and Cal, um, Cal Recycling grants that. Okay. 
So um, I am going to, um, Cal Recycle has a whole bunch of things, including a special needs assessment they need to do. So um, there's a lot to be done here. It's a big act. Uh, take your time and look at it or supporting materials. Again, you can go right here to um, the, the web page on Cal Recycle. Um, or you can just go to calrecycle.org and look up SB54, you will find it. And finally, I wanna leave with this lace on albatross that thanks you very much for your time and attention. Thank you. Next speaker is Doug Coble from uh, CPSA. And Doug is like also a member of the CRA Board of Directors and he's on statewide advisory committees and he is the king of the EPR. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Rick. Yeah. Did you want that? Um, thank you for having me here today. I appreciate being able to come down and, and talk with you about SB 54. My name is Doug Coble. I'm the executive director of the California Product Stewardship Council. Just a little bit about uh, CPSC. We were uh, born out of local government. Uh, local government needed a united voice in the capital to talk about salt waste issues, what was affecting you, because the cities and counties have a lot of things to deal with, not just salt waste. So this was a more focused attempt to give you a single voice in the capital. Um, I work alongside Nick on a regular basis. Uh, you can tell we're kind of chummy. Um, but uh, we, and a little bit more about me, just so you uh, know where I come from, I've been talking trash for well over 30 years. Uh, it has all been in, uh, most of it was in municipal solid waste, so I was actually in local, uh, county government for over 23 and a half of those years. I've spent the last five and a half years at the helm of CPSC. I was the uh, board chair uh, prior to uh, taking on the executive director role of CPSC, but I'm proud to lead this organization. I'm proud to be here, um, here today and also there up in Sacramento representing local governments to make sure that what laws get through are reasonable. Um, for 54, I want to congratulate Nick. Um, SB 54 would not have happened without um, Recology, for one thing, putting up multi-million dollars to get that initiative started, to get the discussion going, because Senator Allen and also other uh, assembly members and senators tried to get this packaging issue under control for years, several years, with no progress. So Recology said, enough's enough. We're going we're gonna to break away, and we're going to try and get the public, the, the people, to say what we want to do with this. Um, Nick was helping lead that charge. And I will tell you, without the initiative, a threat of initiative going to the people, 54 would not have been signed. It would not have been agreed to and would not have been signed. So Nick, thank you for that and all the work you put on that. So a little more about our board. So um, again, like I said, we were born out of local government. So uh, the majority of our board is local government representatives. You might recognize one of your fellow colleagues down here in the Southern California area. Colleen Foster is our currently our treasurer. Uh, Manuel mentioned that he was on the board. Manuel, thank you for all your years of servitude on the board. We do really appreciate it. Um, and here's some more of our members. I don't know if any of the other board members are in the room here, but we have a pretty good uh, representation across the, uh, the state. Um, and then we also have um, four private sector members and then 11 public sector members. So it's a really good representation of who we are and a very diverse group as well. Um, I really appreciate my board. They bring a lot of, of um, knowledge, experience to the table. I love active board members. All of my board members are active and so it really helps us as an organization, which helps you. Because again, we're here for you. Uh, I couldn't do this alone. I wouldn't even try. Um, I have extremely talented staff behind me that do a lot of the great work. Eric, I understand Joanne did an awesome job with your with the uh, Regional Recycling Working Group update yesterday. So um, we're happy to come. If you're a part of that group, you hear me drone on every monthly meeting. Now you, gotta, now you get to listen to Joanne. She's going to be a lot more dynamic than I am. So I'm glad she's able to uh, take over that, that reign for me um, as I venture into my more bigger duties now as a result of uh, SB 54 for, and a number of other things. Um, I would be remiss in not thanking our member, our funders, uh, the local governments throughout the state. Um, if, you're, if you're in the room here and you're a local government, you don't see your uh, red dot for a city or your county in green, please uh, see me afterwards. I'd be happy to get you signed up to become a member of uh, CPSC or a funder of CPSC. And of course, all of, um, our private sector sponsors are very important to us as well. Uh, Republic Services is on there as well. We appreciate having a board member from Republic Services and also them as a funder as well. 
Okay, SB 54. So there's going to be a lot of overlap between uh, Lori and my presentation, so I'll be able to speed through these slides pretty quickly. Um, but this is a this is a big lift. This is a big bill, um, huge thing to happen in California. Uh, producer responsibility bills are not easy. They take years sometimes. Um, when CPSC passed the pharmaceutical bill back in 2018, it took six years to get there. It was just, it's a hard, hard process. Uh, and again, a th the threat of an of a initiative um, by Nick's group made it possible for 54 to be even passed. But again, it talks about it's working on single-use pack plastic packaging and plastic uh, single-use foodware. So I'm not going to go into all the details of these slides, and you're going to see some redundancy between mine and Lori's uh, presentations, which I think is helpful because how many of you are in ed the education side? How many times do you have to tell people before they get it and understand it? <laughs> At least three times. <laughs> That's right. So I'm not doing that. I, you guys are all great. You don't have to hear it three times, but it's great to always just re to reinforce it. Um, you saw this slide earlier from Lori. This is, again, what's out on the Cal Recycle website for uh, some, some of the main provisions of SB 54 and uh, the some of the timelines of what's happening there. I do want to talk about this one a little bit more. Lori did a great job covering this, but I want to do a little more on this. Um, this $5 billion is huge, and it is focused on cleaning up the past sins. Um, it's going to be divert, uh, spread out. There's still some ambiguity about exactly how it's going to be rolled out. Calvary Cycle is working on those regulations that uh, Manuel mentioned. Uh, it's well over 100 pages of regs, so if you really want something to put you to sleep at night, pull up that regs package. I guarantee it'll put you to sleep. Um, but it's really help, going to be helpful, especially to the disadvantaged communities, with the amount of money that was being passed towards the disadvantaged communities to really, because they're the ones that bear a lot of this burden. So why shouldn't they see a lot of relief as well? So um, watch more on this. It doesn't trigger until January 1 of 2027. Um, but then that half a billion dollars a year will be coming in, and then CalRecycle will be dispersing that according to the formulas, at least in the statute, that will be reinforced in the regulations as we progress. A little bit more on that. Um, again, you're going to get this presentation after, so I don't want to go through all the details of what's in here, but I want you to have some uh, good information about how this, uh, all these things are going to be working in 54. And by the way, I should have, should have announced, um, I am here as a CPSC representative today. I am not here as an advisory board member, even though I am the vice chair of the uh, 54 advisory board, uh, but I'm not speaking on the advisory board's behalf today, especially we are subject to the bagley Keene Act, and so therefore we have to be assembled under a public forum at, um, Noticing and all that, and so I am not speaking on behalf of the board today. Okay, so um, like has already been mentioned, the producers are actually going to be required to fund this, and I want to put a little magnitude on this. So not only do we have this half a billion dollars, half a billion dollars per year, ten five billion dollars over ten years, um, there's a bigger price tag to this, a much bigger price tag to this. When the initiative was working through, and Nick can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the estimates were coming in at about three and a half billion dollars a year to uh, accomplish this program. Four billion. Okay, thank you. See, <laughs> um, four billion dollars a year is what it's going to cost the producers of packaging and single-use foodware. So that's probably the bigger lion's share of what's going to impact um, the, these uh, operations. And so um, that five, that half a billion a year seems big, but it's not compared to this. Um, we got to get the stuff cleaned up. We got to get it recyclable. We're tired of seeing all this stuff go out to the landfill or go to waste energy. So there's other better ways to do all this. And again, so I, there's a list of things here that are on the um, that will have to be done to, to get it ready for market, um, including the education piece. That's significant. Making sure there's a good education piece because without that, how are we going to get our residents to understand what really goes in what bin and and why? Okay, I wanted to touch on this one too because. Um, Polystyrene, expanded polystyrene is a difficult material to deal with. Um, most, it's not collected, less than 8% is actually collected and recycled uh, in California today. Um, by 2025, which is next year, less, less than a year from now, they're required to have 25% of the polystyrene um, recycled in California. Now, here's my concern um, as CPSC is how are we going to quantify that? Because if you think about a polystyrene container, a, a clamshell, for example, how much does that weigh? A fraction of an ounce? When it gets into a bin, what's going to be in it? Probably everything, right? <laughs> Have your food, close it up. Maybe there's food waste in there still. It's going to be in there. It's going to add to the weight. I'm, I am uh, going to be very interested as a board member 
listening to how this is going to be calculated to make sure that they are actually um, being able to recycle this. Uh, I think it's going to be a challenge, but I'm, and I'm hoping we'll be able to get it right and so that it's enforceable. Uh, I would love nothing more to see expanded polystyrene for these type of um, operations go away. This stuff is just not good for our environment. It never has been. There's a lot of good alternatives out there. We just need to get it done. Okay, uh, local jurisdic jurisdictions, which you guys have to consider, and so Lori did a great job of covering this as well. Um, so you are going to be required to do things. And if you think 1383 is fun, <laughs> grab hold. <laughs> 54 is going to be even more fun. But at least there's going to be some coverage, there's money coming in. So the difference between 1383 and, 50, and 54 was 1383 was all thrust upon the local jurisdictions to come up with how to fund this. And you're going to go through your rate payers, which a lot of you have. Um, with 54, that funding is coming from the back end. It's now going to be coming from the producers through that one PRO. Um, as Lori mentioned, the Producer Responsibility Organization, um, that is the Circular Action Alliance. Cal Recycle has named that PRO. They are actually also the PRO in, um, in Colorado. California is one of four states that has pack a packaging law on the books. The other, the other three states are Colorado, um, Maine, and Oregon. So uh, out of 50 states, only four of us have got something going. Maryland is talking about it. They're working on a plan. So they're, they're, they've got something going to go. They're doing a study. Um, anyway, so uh, there's going to be a lot of things going on here. And, and Lori had it on her presentation, too, is an impact on the ratepayers. So. This is supposed to make it better for you as, rate, as, the, as cities and counties and the ratepayers to take some relief of the cost of, of these materials off on you. Um, so if you're a city or county, please provide the numbers, the information about what it costs you to get that to Cal Recycle, get your haulers to get that to Cal Recycle, because it's very important as Cal Recycle works forward through the regulation process and then we start, and the pro starts to work on the plan, that they understand what all these costs are so that you know how to divvy up and get this thing going. Um, so please, please fulfill your obligation, really, which is to provide that information to Cal Recycle so they can make more informed decisions. All right, Lori also mentioned the covered uh, materials. There is a covered material list. It was released in uh, January. Uh, it was most. It was supposed to be published on January 1 of 2024. They got it out a little bit early, which was great. Um, I've got a link up there for the list, and then the supplemental list that came out the same day. Um, I think, and then there is a actual full-blown presentation that, you, and there's a link there to the website. Uh, again, when you get this presentation, you'll be able to. Uh, link into it and get to the this material. Um, this is just informing for SB 343, uh, in a sense. This is going to be a little bit different than, uh, because it's trying to say this is what will be covered, but there's a 343 is also going to impact this, and Lori mentioned 343, which is going to say what's what gets the recycling label, the chasing arrows. We've had these chasing arrows since the, I think it was 1970, when it was a competition in Illinois, um, to come up with a kind of cool logo. Well, that's where it came from. It was actually, a little, it was an art comp competition, and uh, an artist, I think he won 700 bucks or something like that. <laughs> and now that's something that's used uh, throughout the world, even. Recyclability is going to be big on this, and this is where the 343 comes in. This is going to determine whether or not can it be recycled here in California. And there's a lot of, there's a big difference between can be recycled and is recycled. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about how these things work, because anything is recyclable. Anything is recyclable. How much does it cost, and how reasonable is it to be able to um, recycle it? And so um, certainly what CPSC tries to do, we try to get the producers to think about this on the front end, design for the end of life so that and so we push um, producer responsibility and having those producers take that stuff back at the end of life because they may make different decisions in the front end uh, the design engineers are going to design what they're told to design and if they're given different parameters they're going to design it differently too so um, we need these companies to understand that this is their problem as well it's not just local governments it's not just the ratepayers Another one, another bill that's going to touch this, which wasn't mentioned earlier, was is AB 1201. Um, Nick had a lot to do with 1201. I appreciate what he did there to take take another stab at defining what is compostable. Um, Lori made the comment about a plate, uh, the plates here. I think it was the plates, um, or one of the items that you're using, that, oh, the Starbucks cups that are not recyclable. Do, do you know why? It's that polyfilm lining that makes them waterproof. Remember, if you put Something in just cardboard, it's going to leak through pretty quickly, a liquid. If it's, a, if it's takeout food, it's going to be greasy. So you want to make sure it's coated correctly. Well, they've been using polyfilm 
Polyfilm doesn't work well in a compost operation because now you get microplastics into the compost. How does that work for organic compost? It doesn't. And so that's one of the issues that they're going to be wrestling with is how they've got to figure out what kind of lining can they put on there, what other linings are there that will be passed, the BPI um, test will be deemed as compostable, therefore then the whole product is compostable when you're talking about single use. So more to come on that. Uh, follow the 1201 discussion as well um, if you're interested in the compostability step. Type. Okay, um, as mentioned earlier, I am a uh, member of the board. Uh, we were actually, uh, um, there's, it's a cross spectrum uh, of who's on there. There are 13 voting members, three non-voting members, um, and uh, we're trying to, the, the board is representative of all the aspects of this problem, which is good. I think it's great. We got a, a broad brush of stakeholders. We are subject to the Bagley Keene Act, so therefore every meeting we have will be open, an open meeting. Um, our next one is on uh, March 8th. If you're really interested in watching us go all day long, grind along, um, feel free to log into Cal Recycle, and there will be a link to get in and watch the, watch the meeting. We are going to be doing day-long meetings, um, three. We're going to be doing starting with monthly meetings, uh, all-day meetings, monthly meetings, starting with March 8th. That will be the next one. There's the board members um, that were duly appointed or elected. Um, there were several organizations that elected their members to be appointed. Um, and then the three non-voting members are the um, uh, California Re Retailers Association, oh, what's the other one, the California uh, Grocers Association, and then one was the PRO. And the PRO gets a member on there, but again, it's a non-voting member, but um, uh, Jamie was, he was appointed after the uh, uh, Circular Alliance, Action Alliance was appointed as the official PRO of the program by Cal Recycle. And on our first meeting, we had to elect a chair. That was Timothy Burroughs. If you don't know Timothy Burroughs, he is the executive director of, of Alameda Stop Waste. Uh, he is a, an excellent cat herder. He's going to do a great job with all of us cats trying to keep us in line up there on, on the dais. Um, and then I was elected, at, fortunately elected as vice chair. And then Veronica Pardo, who represents the uh, Resource Recovery Coalition of California, we like to call them RC, our R2C2. Um, they're the northern counterpart to the California Waste Haulers uh, Council, if you're familiar with them down here, which is a lot of the independent haulers. Um, so she's going to do a great job representing the hauling community um, on, that, on that board in that position. So there's going to be a lot going on here. I know we're short on time, and I'm, I'm between you and lunch right now, which seems to be a trend for me. I'm either here holding you back from your food, or I get to entertain you and try to keep you awake after food. So um, maybe it's better to be before than after. Um, but definitely stay tuned. Log into Cal Recycle's website uh, and if you're interested in this and follow along. And definitely comment. Uh, feedback is important and necessary for us to do something that's going to be workable and usable for everybody.